Let's talk about replacing conditionals with polymorphism and primitive obsession. Or expressed in a different way, the limits of replacing conditionals with polymorphism. In other words, as far as I understand it, it seems that it's not always possible to replace conditionals with polymorphism. Let's talk about when that is. But let's first make sure that we are on the same page with the concepts. So, replace conditional with polymorphism is a phrase that was popularized by Martin Fowler in his great, great, great book, Refactoring. As a programmer, I find that this book is one of these go-to books that every programmer must have. I've linked it in the description. Be sure to check it out. Moving on. So yes, the term is popularized by Martin Fowler, but what does it actually mean? Let's break down the statement. We're talking about replacing conditionals with polymorphism. This means that we need to understand what conditionals are and what polymorphism is. So conditionals are if statements, switch statements, etc., etc. When you're switching, right? When you're saying that there are multiple paths through this program, when you're making a branch in your code. Polymorphism, on the other hand, polymorphism is, if I'm not mistaken, a way of achieving dynamic dispatch. By example, it's when you have an animal as a superclass or as an interface or an abstract class, and then you have a cat and a dog, both inheriting from animal. The point being that the rest of your code can then couple itself to animals rather than to concrete cats or to concrete dogs. So you couple yourself to a superclass. You, you couple yourself to interfaces rather than concretions. But if you're watching this channel, I'm pretty sure you're already intimately familiar with polymorphism, so let's move on. The point here is that we're saying replace conditionals with polymorphism. So every time you have a conditional, you should replace it with some kind of polymorphism. The easiest way to get it is probably to think about the example given by Martin Fowler. I've linked that in the description. But essentially, the part where he replaces conditionals with the polymorphism is that he has some kind of movie database system and he gives genres to movies. So he puts enums in the movie class. So he has a class that represents a movie and a field in the movie class is the, the category of the movie or the genre of the movie. And instead of having some kind of class, he simply uses uh, an enum or uh, an integer or something like this. I can't remember, but essentially some kind of primitive or primitive-like thing that represents the category that that movie belongs to. Uh, actually, when I think about it, it's actually not genres, but it's something like genres. But whatever. Essentially, the point is that he starts out with this as a field and then move towards instead making multiple types of movies where the, the movie type represents uh, what kind of genre it is. Again, I'm, I'm saying it incorrectly about saying that it's genre, it's not actually genre, but I think you get the gist of it. The reason we're saying replace conditionals with polymorphism is that when we are now grabbing out something or calculating something that depends on what type, what genre a movie is, instead of switching, instead of reading this enum or integer or whatever it was, reading this primitive and then making a decision based on that primitive, we can simply dispatch into the class and then because of polymorphism, depending on which actual concrete type it is of, you can calculate different things. <clears throat> I'm probably making it overly complicated when I talk about it like this, if you just think about it, it's actually super trivial. And if you have dog and cat and animal, and if cats and dogs override the speak method from animal, then if you're passing around instances of cats and dogs, mixing them, but refer to them as animals in your code, then as soon as you call speak, you will call the method on the cat if it's a cat, and you will call the method on a dog if it's a dog essentially dynamic dispatch. So now we've handled what replacing conditionals with polymorphism is. So before we dig into the limits of that, let's first talk about primitive obsession. So primitive obsession is the phenomena where a programmer is overly committed to coupling to primitives rather than complex objects. So again, let's, let's define, right? Like what are primitives? Obsession I won't define because I think you can f <laughs> figure out what that means. But primitives essentially are things like ints, floats, numbers, uh, in some languages, strings. But so what does primitive obsession mean? So primitive obsession means that a program is overly obsessed with passing around primitives rather than passing around objects defined by the programmer. So instead of passing around said animal, for example, and then calling speak on that instance, for example, I may be first extracting the string of what the animal says and then pass around that string. 
So in some oversimplified sense, it's a way of extracting data out of objects, extracting the primitive data out of objects, and then passing around that instead of passing around our complex objects. We'll talk more in depth about this phenomena some other time because it's super interesting and there are some nuances and one could ask why this perhaps isn't a good thing because primitives should probably have less dependencies. But it's not as obvious as my, one might think. Let's talk about this some other time. <sighs> but essentially here's where I want to end up. Primitive obsession may seem like a good thing at first, but when you start to think about replacing conditionals with polymorphism, you'll realize that you can't use replace conditional with polymorphism if you have primitives. You can't use polymorphism if you have primitives. So essentially what you're doing is that you're forcing yourself into a place where you have to switch, where you have to use switches, where you have to use if statements, where you have to use conditionals in order to handle the branching of the program. Instead of, if you had objects, you could use polymorphism, which in many ways is a much more sane way or safe way to handle switching, to handle conditionals in your program, or rather to handle branching in your program. So what I find super interesting about this is that after having been a fan of replacing conditionals with polymorphism for a while, I started to think that actually, maybe we don't even need conditionals at all because we can always replace conditionals with polymorphism. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, the object-oriented language Smalltalk doesn't even have the if construct. Now, Sandy Metz shows in another talk, I've linked it in the description, that you can use other constructs of the Smalltalk language to build what's essentially an equivalent of the if construct. But again, it's kind of a thought-provoking idea to say that actually the language doesn't need a dedicated construct for conditionals. But here's where it gets interesting. I like to think of this in terms of the edge of the application. When we start to hit primitives, when we necessarily have to hit primitives because of the requirements of the application, then we can't use replace conditionals with polymorphism. Then we can't replace conditionals with polymorphism. So at the edge of our application, there is some dirt that sort of necessarily has to be there because we can't encapsulate it into our nice domain objects and into our nice domain language. And if you think about it, just let's take a concrete example to make this more concrete. Think about something trivial. Let's say you are building a console application, a terminal application, and the user is prompted to type in a number from one to five. You get it in as a string because it's a terminal application and you want to do, you want to take different paths in the program. You want to do different things depending on whether it's a one, whether it's a two, whether it's a three, etc., etc. And if it's something below one or if it's something above five, then that would be incorrect input and you want to do something completely different. So for all of these scenarios, we have different paths through the program. So somehow we need to identify which number the user actually pressed and then move the program accordingly or direct the program accordingly. And while I haven't given this deep thought, if you just think about it spontaneously, you would realize that, well, of course, you could probably find some kind of way to define that particular domains of numbers belong to a particular type, right? But I'm not necessarily sure how that's better than conditionals, right? As long as you are isolating your conditionals to the edge of the application. So essentially, my point is this, to sum up, if your requirements necessitate the use of primitives at some point in your program, then at some point in your program, you will have to use conditionals. You can't replace the conditionals with polymorphism because the requirements inherently necessitate the use of conditionals. Because we are hitting the edge of the application, we are hitting a point where you get data in, in a format that is not controlled by you in, in terms of a primitive. And, and again, I, I haven't thought about this deeply, but probably this holds for, for example, API calls as well. This is why I'm saying the edge, right? It's not necessarily just the concept of primitives. It probably also goes for exiting the boundary of the application. So interacting with third party libraries, interacting with the user, etc etc as soon as you are leaving the land of your nice controlled code and get into the wild right things are structured in a way that you don't have control of and thus we may be forced to actually use conditionals but as long as we're in the boundary of our own application 
we can I see no reason why we should ever have to use a conditional I mean the conditional will have to stem from primitive obsession finally before I go let me just formulate this as a design tip the way I'm thinking about this is then that if you understand that a particular requirement necessitates the use of a conditional then you should isolate that conditional in one place and you should push it as far as possible out to the edge of your application. You should not spread out this conditional throughout, scatter out your conditional throughout your application, and you should not let it sink in deeply into the core of your application, but rather you should push it out to the boundary, right? You wrap it in some kind of wrapper that's wrapping some kind of wrapper, etc., etc. Like, you make sense of the conditional within your own domain language. So to me, this kind of sounds like a, a way to handle necessary dirt there's something problematic you need to handle so you wrap it in something that's nicer and hide it so you would treat the conditional as a disease right you're isolating it into a particular place of your application pushing it as far out so that it's not something that you use often instead of letting it spread out through your application because as Sandy Metz says conditionals tend to breed thanks for watching remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one